Okay, here's another example. And um, similarly, find the percent finer and percent or percent passing. And this is the given information. So what I want you to do is to pause the video and work this problem. Okay, I'm going to assume that you've done that. And it's quite straightforward. So I simply work from the bottom up. I have the 41 here. I move the 41 there. Then I have 41 plus 12 is 53. 53 plus 0 is 53. 53 plus 9 is 62. 62 plus 15 is 77. 77 plus 1 is 78. 78 plus 3 is 81. 81 plus 6 is 87. 87 plus 5 is 92. And then we confirm that we're okay. 92 plus 8 is 100. And now what I can do with this is I look for the everything above the number 4 sieve is gravel. So 8 plus 5 plus 6 is 19% gravel. The sand is in this region because the sand is below 4 and above 200. I add all those numbers up, I get 40% sand. And then in the pan, I have 41. That means I have 41% clay and silt. Now, what we do is we use this column to classify the soil. So in other words, I, have, I want to plot this, these numbers. And the way that we plot them is I'm going to plot, well, on my x-axis, this is the upper x-axis, <laughs> upper x-axis is sieve number and then my y-axis is percent finer. So I plot, now your, your given plot uh, works like this. I have, um, well, the three inch sieve to the left, I have the number 200 to the right, and I have all of the other numbers in between. It's a, it's a given x-axis. And then you simply plot, okay, three inches, I have 92. So I plot it there. And then the other one I'll show is the number 200. We have 41. So number 200, I plot 41 there. I plot all the other points in between, and, um, and then I simply connect all the points. It's easiest just to connect them with straight lines. And that gives me my grain size curve. So that's my grain size curve. In a sense, the x-axis is basically backward because what we see is if I look at the bottom x-axis, it's particle size. Well, what happens is that the particle size for the number 200 is very small. The particle size for the number for the three inches is very big. So I have very big to the left, I have very big very small to the right, so in a sense that is a backward, it's the way it's usually plotted in that manner. Um, okay, here's another one. So what I want you to do is to pause the video again and work this problem, and um, what I want you to do is um, to, uh, we're going to plot these numbers. So we're going to plot the percent passing. And um, I'm going to add some other information to this. I'm going to add that what we call the liquid limit is 58 and the plastic limit is 38. I will discuss what those mean later. So start, pause the video, fill out this percent passing, 
Uh, you can create a little plot, plot those numbers. That's what I want you to do. Okay, assuming that uh, you, I'm assuming that you did this, and um, so, you know, in addition, you can figure out how much gravel, sand, and clay and silt there is, and um, if we add all those numbers, we get 23% gravel, adding those numbers, well, adding all these numbers, we get 57% sand and then down here I have silt and clay 20 percent my percent passing I simply go <laughs> adding from the bottom up like that and um, to plot those numbers this is my standard plot here so in other words this would you this is you'll be given a plot that looks like this on the on a quiz and um, the y-axis at the top has sieve numbers, and notice we have sieve sizes, or, uh, size of the holes, over to the left of that, because those are the big ones. And uh, down below, we read the grain size in millimeters, so that's automatic, because we know what, that a number 200 sieve has, you know, approximately 0.07 millimeters. So that's given on the plot. All you have to do is plot the sieve numbers, basically, on the upper y-axis and the percent passing on the, sorry, upper x-axis and percent passing on the y-axis, and you get a plot that looks like this one. That is my grain size curve. All right. After that, we want to look at the fine-grained soil classification. And the fine-grained soil classification is based on what we call the Atterberg limits tests. And um, we have the liquid limit test, which we will abbreviate LL, and the plastic limit test, which we'll abbreviate PL. The, the plastic limit test result will be the PL. The, pl the liquid limit test result will be labeled LL. And we're going to use the material that passes the number 200 sieve. That's the clay and the silt. Now, we're going to do this test in the lab. And the way to do it is we're going to mix this material with water. And our goal, our goal is to get the soil to the correct water content, abbreviated small w. Now, what is the definition of water content? Water content, small w, is equal to the um, weight of the water, abbreviated w, capital W sub w, weight of the water divided by the weight of the solid particles, abbreviated capital W subscript s. WW over WS, that is the water content. It's easy to get because if I have a wet soil, what I do is I weigh it wet, I weigh it dry, and um, <laughs> the way that it works is the difference between the wet weight and the dry weight is the weight of the water. The dry weight is the weight of the solids. So it's very simple to get the water content. It's you weigh it wet, you weigh it dry, and then you can figure out the water content. And um, how do you get it to be dry? You simply put it in an oven. And, um, and so um, the wet weight is the weight that you have when you're <laughs> running the test, and then um, the dry weight, you put it in the oven, get it dry. You figure out the water content. The, now, what, the, what is the meaning of plastic limit and liquid limit? I'm going to give you sort of a, a gut feel for what these are, and then in the lab we will do these, and you'll see the actual 
uh, the actual method. But what it comes down to is that what we're going to do is we are going to take our soil and we're going to roll it into one eighth inch worms. And we will know that the water content, in other words, the water, our goal is to get the water content right. Meaning we're going to have to add water to our soil. We may have to subtract water from our soil. Or, you know, we're sort of like adding and subtracting water from our soil until we get it right. And we get it right when we create our 1 8 inch worm and it cracks. If we roll a 1 8 inch worm and it doesn't crack, then we don't have the right water content. It's too wet. Because if we can roll it into an eighth of an inch worm and it's not cracking, it's too wet. That means we have to dry it out a little bit. And then we try again. And if we get, once we get to the point where the one eighth inch worm cracks, then we stop and we figure out the water content by weighing it wet, weighing it dry, and we get the water content. That gives us, that water content by definition is the plastic limit, PL. The liquid limit is the water content when the soil makes a good frosting, just for a gut feel for this. In other words, many of you have frosted a cake and um, and you've made frosting. Maybe you've made frosting yourself. Well, if you make frosting, for instance, you take milk or water, add sugar, and um, you create a frosting. Well, if you if your frosting is too dry, when you try to frost the cake, you're going to destroy the cake because it's too stiff. If the fro if you have too much water or too much milk in your frosting. It, then it becomes liquidy, and you can't frost the cake normally, then you just pour it over the cake, it just makes a big mess. So you have to get the water content of your frosting just right. When it's just right, then, it pour, then you can smooth it over the cake, it looks great. So the liquid limit is a little bit like that. Once we get the, um, the our um, water soil mixture to make a nice paste, a nice smooth frosting, then we know that we have the liquid limit approximately. We're going to do this in the lab in a different way, but just to give you a feel for it. Okay, so what um, we want to do is to classify this soil. So what I have here is I have two things is I have the, uh, the results of the sieve test and the results of the Atterberg limit test, the liquid limit and plastic limit. So we have all of that. And, um, and in this particular case, I've even done some of the work for you. I figured out that there's 23% gravel, uh, that there is 61% sand. Oops and 16% fines, clay and silt. And I figured out the percent finer, and we can plot this. We are going to define something called the plasticity index, PI, plasticity index. It's quite simple to calculate it. It's the liquid limit minus the plastic limit. In this case, 72 minus 43 gives me 29, so my plasticity index is 29. So we got the liquid limit, we got the plastic limit, and we have the plasticity index. Now, there are standard plots that we need to look at, and there are there is um, uh, um, uh, guides to doing this, and this is this is our this is our coarse grain soil chart, so you'll be given this on the quiz. So you just need to know how to use this chart. Now, um, one of the first things that we're going to do is we're going to classify the fines portion. Now, the fines portion, uh, well, you know, just at this point, uh, what we've done is we've um, uh, plotted this, <laughs> this blue plot is the grain size curve for the soil that we just did. Okay, now 
Um, the uh, what we're going to do is I'm going to look at this uh, liquid limit of 72 and the plasticity index of 29, and I'm going to plot that on one of the plots here. So um, if we go up to here, I'm going to look at this bottom plot, and if I look at that, I'm going to see that the liquid limit is on the x-axis, the plasticity index is on the y-axis. They use slightly different symbols. But the liquid limit was 72, and um, let's go back here. So what are we looking at? 72, 29. So I'm going to plot 72 on the x-axis, 29 on the y-axis, and that gives me that point right there, 72.29. Now if I look closely, this is a standard plot, and this plot is broken up into zones. So um, the green zone is CH. The purple zone is MH. The pink zone is ML. The yellow zone is CL, and this dark purple zone here is CL-ML. So this particular point, the 7229, plots in the MH region. Well, that means that the fines plot as MH. MH stands for silt high plasticity. So um, the fines plot as MH, silt with, low, with high plasticity, but that's not our soil. Why is it not our soil? Because if I look at my soil, Look what I've got. I've got 23% gravel, 61% sand, 16 Well, what do I mostly have? Well, I've mostly got a sand. I've got mostly sand, so, you know, we have to follow the, the method, but basically, I know that I have a sand here. I don't have a silt. The silt just classifies the fines. The fines plot is MH, but the soil is not, is not MH. So don't make that mistake. That's, if there's one mistake that people make, they look at those, they plot that, they think they're done. They're not. They have to plot the whole soil, not just the fines. And that means I have to use the chart here. And the way that I use it is to start out. Well, what do I have? Do I have a gravel or a sand? Well, I have more sand than gravel. So... I'm down here at sand. I'm going to go left to right, so I'm in sand. The next thing, next thing I go through is, um, well, I'm going to have to magnify that a little bit. But now I'm going to look at this next region here, and this says uh, less than 5% passes the number 200, 5 to 12% passes the number 200, greater than 12% passes the number 200. Well, we have greater than 12% past the number 200, so we're down at the, at the bottom there. So then we move along to this region. Does my, where does my soil plot? MLMH, CLCH, CLML. Well, we just did it. The fines plot as MLMH. So I'm over here, SM. So that is my answer, SM. Then... I go just a little bit farther, and I see how much gravel do I have. Do I have more than 15% gravel or less than 15% gravel? Well, we had more than 15% gravel, so my answer says silty sand with gravel. So that is my answer, SM, silty sand with gravel. And so there's my answer, SM, silty sand with gravel. Okay, we'll do another one.